Hi, it's Flair. The new version 0.2.0 of StreamerBot is out on the main release channel now. It's got some really huge changes that make it more powerful and easier to use than ever. There's more to cover than I can do in one video, but I want to go in-depth into the biggest and most significant change, and also highlight a few of my favorite smaller updates as well. By far the biggest change is the new trigger system. This is a really fundamental change in how StreamerBot works and opens up a whole new set of possibilities. The gist of the change is that now, instead of having actions be directly tied to specific commands or broadcasting software events or streaming platform events, there's a middleman called the trigger that we use to connect those events to the actions. Sound like pretty much the same thing? Well, in a lot of simple use cases, they are ultimately the same thing. A channel point reward is redeemed and an action runs. Someone subscribes and another action runs. To your users in chat, it won't really make that much of a difference, but it affects the day-to-day -day operation of StreamerBot quite significantly. In the background, this change turned the relationship between actions and events from a one-to-many relationship into a many-to-many -many relationship. What does this mean? Previously, you could assign the same action to several events at the same time. Maybe a chat command and a voice command and a channel point redemption all fire the same action. But if you wanted to have one event fire more than one action, you had to build a parent action that would then fire all the other actions. Essentially, an action could be assigned to many events, but an event could only be assigned to one action. With the new system, if you want a command to trigger six different actions, you can just do it. Before you get worried about having to go in and set up triggers for everything you've already built, I'll assure you that the update process will handle this for you. I have over 500 actions assigned to all sorts of different events and commands, and the triggers were created successfully for me with no problems. That being said, how do we set up a new trigger in this version? Well, it's a lot like adding a sub action to an action. You'll see now on the action tab that each action has a triggers section that you can add to in the top right. And you can add new triggers by right clicking and choosing from the menu. If you choose core, commands, command triggered, you can tie the action to an existing command. Another new and wonderful feature added in this update is that right here you'll also see an add command button. Yes, you can add a new command directly from the actions tab. Set up the command like you normally would have, and then you can save and add the trigger. Similarly, if you want to assign an action to some sort of event, you can just navigate to that menu, find the event in question, and then add details necessary for each event. In the case of cheers or donations or something like that, you may be asked for a min and max range, so you can set up a trigger for 5 bits and another for a 100, or for donations below $10, one for donations above $10, and so on and so forth. You may notice a little question mark above the triggers. If you click this, you can explore a list of all the triggers that have been set up and which action each one triggers. This menu isn't particularly useful day to day, but it can certainly help a lot when you're trying to figure out what else might be tied to a particular trigger already. One last thing about triggers that makes life easier when building and testing new actions in StreamerBot is that you can right click on a trigger that you have set up and choose test trigger, allowing you a simple way to test an entire action. You can even add a test trigger and assign specific values to any variables that you wish to be passed in when you test. It's really, really helpful. So the switch to triggers is really the biggest change to day-to-day -day life using StreamerBot, and it takes the most time to explain, but it's definitely not the only quality of life improvement that was made. Do you use global variables at all in your actions and wish they were a bit easier to manage? Well, you got it. First of all, you can now access global variables simply by adding a tilde character before and after it, similar to how you can access existing arguments with the percent sign. Previously, you would have had to add a whole get global variable sub action to fetch the value, where you establish some argument name to store the value in, and then you reference that argument in your message or other sub actions. Now you can skip that first part entirely. I'll probably make a short video about this on its own in the future, but feel free to leave a comment if you want to know more about how to do this or if you have any other questions. All right, now take a look at the icons at the top of StreamerBot above the tabs. The rightmost one is labeled variables. When you click it, you get the variable viewer. You can browse all the persisted and non-persisted variables, including any user-specific variable. You can also click into any of these variables and adjust either the variable name or the value. So this is a really big quality of life improvement when you're building actions that use a lot of global variables and you want to see the state of each of those variables while you're testing. Speaking of testing, one of the main ways that I've generally tested stuff when building new actions in StreamerBot is simply by assigning a command to my action that I'm building and then opening chat either through OBS or in a browser window and typing out the command that way. Now there's no need to even open a browser window for this. You can just click the chat icon next to the variable viewer and it'll open an inline chat interface where you can monitor chat and type up commands directly. It's worth mentioning that this chat interface is also capable of monitoring and sending chat to and from both Twitch and YouTube simultaneously, which might be really useful if you're a multi-streamer. What's more, if you go into settings on this chat window, set up a quick action bar of up to five actions you can fire by hovering over chat message and then clicking the little one through five. 
These actions will have access to a number of variables based on the chat message hovered, including information about the message itself, things like emotes we used in the message, whether bits are given, whether it's a reply, the color of the chatter, etc. And information about the user, like whether they're a subscriber, and basic stuff like their username and display name. You could use these quick bar actions as a way to give people a shout out easily, maybe copy a message to be used in some fun way, a la buttsbot, or maybe just fire a hug command, something like that. I'm still working out how best to leverage this feature, but it's really cool that it's even available. Another small but wonderful new feature is the ability to have your bot reply to commands in chat instead of just sending a new chat message. So someone could type their exclamation hug command, and instead of just spitting out a random message in chat, maybe even 10 messages later after the command, you can now actually leverage Twitch's threading feature and reply to the original message where the command was typed. To do this, you just use the Twitch reply to message sub action instead of the Twitch send message to channel sub action. For a normal command or chat coming in through the Twitch chat message event, you want to add percent sign msg id percent sign in the reply id field. This way, Twitch knows which message you're replying. If you have a message ID saved from some other means, you can also pass that in. These are the big things that I use pretty much every day since I've been running the alpha, but there's so much more too. VTube Studio is now a supported integration, as well as Crowd Control and Elgato Wavelink. The YouTube integration now allows the use of a bot account. Twitch Hype Chat is now supported if that's of interest to you as well. Import and export functions in StreamerBot have also been up. I should mention that old StreamerBot imports will still work in the new version, but new exports from StreamerBot 0.2.0 and later will not work in the older version. Myriad other small changes, fixes, and new features have been added as well. I'll put a link to the full change logs in the description. Let me know in the comments what your favorite change was in this version, or if you have any questions about some of the new features, I'd love to hear your feedback. For now, check out this other StreamerBot tutorial and learn about queues.